I, I just found my dice after like two months of uh, uh, at least two months of them being lost. So I'm excited. I also got this one when I get a crit. How could you lose it. dice that big? Hi. <laughs> I don't think there's anything going on this weekend. No. Not if it in was person. Con, we'd be in Indianapolis, so that'd be different. I don't think we should go anywhere in person right now. Yeah. Yeah. If, it, if this were Gen Con, I'd be hungover right now. <laughs> Neat. <laughs> Bobby, you don't have any you don't have audio, you. bud. Apparently, we they can hear us, but not you. Wait, but we here? Oh, hmm. Are, are you only streaming the, the Zoom no. audio? No, my my audio levels were set right, but when we had the issues with Zoom, I had to disable my voice modulator, and apparently huh. those settings didn't go through. I'm in now because OBS nice. was like, "You're not muted," and my mic was like, "You're not muted," but my computer was like, "They're not plugged into each other." So. <laughs> Hey everybody! There. Try. We're gonna do a different intro again. Uh, Let's try that again from the top. Yeah. To right. be fair, this wouldn't be the GM table if we didn't have tech issues in the first few minutes. It happens every week, multiple times a week. We don't know what we're doing, but this Ooh, is something new for the channel. This is kind of a promoted stream. We're not paid to run this, but we we're given a free game and. They're a friend of the channel, so we decided to say yes. We're running a game for Bloat Games called Survive This Fantasy Edition. I said yes to this because one of my all-time favorite OSR games is Dark Places and Demigorgons, which is another Survive This game. It's basically Stranger Things. I could not remember the name of the show. But this is classic fantasy, and classic in the sense of we have a ghoul, we have a dog person, we have a bear person... But hey, we also have an elf, so like it counts. Yeah. Oh. You guys are playing in basically fantasy landia. There's a bigger campaign and everything where if we enjoy this game, we may be doing it with people who actually have time to hang out with us on a regular basis. <laughs> but that doesn't matter to any of you guys right now because you're all entering the Trial of Heroes which is real simple. Within the kingdom, there is a cave that is said those who enter it either die or emerge as heroes. No one knows fully what's in the cave because reports have said of those few who have survived different things. It's said to change based on who goes in. But because this is the will of the fates, the king and the kingdom have deemed anyone can choose to go in. And if they survive, they're Fated to be a hero. We need to let them be heroes. They're destined to save the kingdom. I mean, let's be honest, the king's probably they're destined to save me. But part of that and part of the rules of the kingdom, or laws, I should say, is if you're up for trial, you can choose to face the trial of heroes instead. Now, those aren't the only people that go in, but given that it's about a 99.9% .9 mortality rate, the only ones who enter the trials are either those brave slash crazy enough to think they're destined to be heroes or those desperate enough to know they'll likely die if they don't anyways. So with that long-winded exposition behind us, we open on an iron cage being lowered down this darkened Pit in the deep blackness. It's a big ass cage because there's six of you and a few of you are quite large. You guys can decide if you know each other beforehand, 
but we're going to open with going traditionally around here. We go clockwise of introductions. So first, who are you? Plug anything you want to plug. And then who is your character? And the most important part of who your character is, is why are you in or entering the Trial of Heroes? Now, going clockwise, we're actually starting with one of our guests, Eric. So you can introduce yourself, man. Hi, everyone. My name is Eric. Uh, I, I'm a variety streamer on Twitch. I also do a lot of tabletop all over the Internet. It's like on Saving Throw Show and various other places. Uh, yeah, and I am playing uh, the ghoul necromancer, Yanto, the animator. Uh, and Yanto uh, is definitely here to avoid going to jail. I do, have, I do have one big question for Yanto. Do you have a friend who goes by the animatrix? Uh N not yet because uh, they're probably cooler than you i'm sorry yeah because a lot of uh because it was very specifically said in the rule book that ghouls tend to not have any friends unless they're up to something very sinister hmm. <laughs> they tend to keep to themselves all right continuing around we have in fact we're gonna get all our guests out of the way first all of our non-regulars we have jordan uh, and hey you're not the only jordan on this one so yeah, well, I I am the only Jordan on this one. Or that's what I meant. I, <laughs> right, right. I, well, I got I'm it because I'm drunk, but I have a newborn. Like, it does the same thing to your <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Jordan Pridgen. I am a TTRPG streamer with Saving Throw Show on Wild Cards, um, which is a show we do on Fridays, which is pretty fun. And my character is Bolgo the Hungry, and he is a uh, 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 a Norgarm. Norgarm. Basically, Don't ask me bear. how to enunciate it. I didn't write it. He's a bear person. He's a person who is a bear. And he is... Do, do we want to go into explanations as to why? Like, yeah. Okay. So he is here to not go to jail because he broke into, like, a settlement and just, like, ripped through a bunch of people to get to basically, like, a bakery. Yes. <laughs> basically, picnic baskets. He blitzed for blintzes. But he just, you know, something came over him and he tore through a whole settlement to get to just a wonderful smelling bakery and just eat everything there. And the authorities caught him, you know, sitting in the midst of this bakery with just blood and death around him and all the pies and honey and picnic baskets eaten. And this was his only option. <laughs> oh, right. Honestly, sitting in a bakery with blood and death and pies all around is kind of how I want to go. So Yeah, right? I get it. Continuing around, this is a guest, but someone who used to frequent the channel a lot more. So if you're a long time fan of the GM table, like well before we were on Twitch, you might recognize Mike. I don't know about if it was well before we were on Twitch, considering we did a several and streams together on we Twitch. did do some of the one shots and a short-lived campaign oh yeah that, that we don't talk about that we, yeah there were so many tech issues everything failed um actually two short-lived campaigns never mind um You're making me look I'm Mike. bad yeah uh, i was here before this got all professional and stuff um, when that happened i'm not a big time game streamer. I don't have enough time because I run too many games that I don't stream. Uh, so not as uh, fancy as some of these guys. But I will be playing uh, Leo Fiery. Uh, he's a fine car, fiend car. I guess fiend car probably because he's like a half demon or part demon. I don't know. Uh, he's red and has horns. Name, yeah. The important part about Leo Fiery is he's also really hoping someday to become a celebrity chef. Um, he's been working on his routine. His goal in life is to have a traveling show where he teaches people how to cook. Unfortunately, he didn't have a lot of money to get that off the ground. And he might have stolen a lot of money and gotten caught because he's a cook, not a thief. Uh, but he's hoping that he comes out of this all right and can make a name for himself. He's always working on his uh, TV personality, new catchphrases, really wants to 
Who wants to make a go of this? All right. I'd say a cook, not a thief. And I want to say you haven't worked in many kitchens, but I know you know better, Mike. But continuing. A cook, not a thief, Bobby. <laughs> continuing around, we have someone very new to the Savage Worlds community and kind of showing up in a lot because you're about to be doing a podcast with the Hussman, who we all love. But was it uh, Ellen? Because yep. I think it said uh, your username's Ello, and I'm like, it's not Ello. No. <laughs> um, yeah. Hi, I'm Ellen Delino. Um, my uh, Twitter handle is my full name because I don't want to be employable. Um, <laughs> I am mainly a podcaster. I GM a Savage Worlds podcast called The Birdhouse Mysteries. Today, I am playing a character called Oriana Lane. She is a human. Uh, not interesting like everybody else and she is a mystic and she really doesn't think she should be here because all she did is copy some books to hand out to some poor people who couldn't afford books and when guards came to stop her she might have killed a couple i mean the they were true trying to question, stop you the true question knowing your character sheet Censorship. i may have wrote that written that pdf did they die to the hands of a purple portal that tentacles come out of you know, it's not really important how that happened, but it might have happened that way. I mean, they certainly wished for death at the hands of that portal. <laughs> All right. So continuing around now into some of our regulars. In fact, one of our most regulars, someone who's around so much he actually GMs a game on the channel now. We have Andy. Hi, I'm Andy. I work at an animal hospital in Atlanta, um, and I play here quite a bit as well as yes gm a transformers game on saturday and um i am playing corwin who is the elf beast master and um i feel like he has a small drake as a pet okay. that has like moth wings and his name is alfonso He also has whiskers that look a bit like a Van Dyke mustache. Yeah, a because little with a bit. name like Alfonso, mm -hmm. we, we got to give him some flair. I feel like he doesn't talk to everyone a lot, but he'll like laugh and like say something that, to Alfonso, and then like you don't hear anything back. <laughs> you know, like they're just communicating on their own. <laughs> and what brings you into the trial of heroes? <clears throat> I heard that there is a rare magical creature who is captive down here, and I hope to release it and befriend it. Oh, cool. So you're on side crazy, not desperate. Got it. And then finally, we have another growing to be regular here, mainly on the Saturday time slot, Ellis. You are muted. Let's... You muted yourself before you started talking. <laughs> you muted yourself instead of unmuting yourself. Yeah. Hey, everybody. I'm, I'm... Has anyone brought, okay. brought up the fact that they muted themselves before they... <laughs> 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 you had it prepared, and then it was and then it was just the right just thing. There. So Yeah, I was just setting you up. Okay. And also, to the person who pointed this out, I've got these prepared, that's all I got. Okay, um, hi, <laughs> I'm Ellis. Uh, I have a very boring jo job in life. Uh, I worked at, the, at, the, at a Renaissance fair, this is a thing, maybe I'll do it next year, not this year. Um, yeah, that's what I got there. Uh, I'm playing, uh, I'm gonna be playing a what if, what the hell, how do I describe this? Uh, my dog man, it's called an arc wall. Arc wall, arc wall. Yeah, his name is Rhoda. And uh, he's down here because on one hand, he believed that, he, that he, he, should, he, should, he was destined to come down here at some point. And so he decided, well, if I'm gonna come down here uh, anyway, let's actually let's actually get get something done before I come down here. So he may have murdered somebody who who wronged him. I got something out of it. It's great. I'm destined to be a hero, so I might as well make with the murder now. 
<laughs> hey, hey, if I kill him and I become a hero, it's, who's going to argue with yeah, me? I mean, you're absolved of all your crimes if you come out of the trials, so. I was going to do it anyway. I might as well get some value. Yeah, you don't want to get absolved <laughs> and not have any cool crimes, though. That, that is true. That's pretty lame. That, like, that's the kid that's in Saturday school for just not doing a lot of homework. Don't yeah. be- I, I feel like if you get absolved you and you were like crimes were like low key enough, you could be like, can I go do a few extra crimes? Like, can and just put it on my tab? Like a, can I get a, like a, a coupon? Jail free card. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Finally, I'm Bobby, GM Bobby here on Twitch, on the GM table, on YouTube, on the GM table. Every so often I pop up on podcasts and stuff. But mainly I'm busy running this beautiful disaster. So now we can get in. Actually, before we get into into everything, I want to thank people who've been tipping and everything's been going crazy, which I love and appreciate because, like I said, we are doing a sponsored game, but we ain't get paid for it. They just it's someone I like their games and they were willing to give us a copy before it's released. So, hey, let's do it. It's the tips and everything that do sponsor us and support us and keep everything running. I want to say they keep the lights on because we're not fancy enough for a studio, but they do (laughs) keep paying my Zoom fees every month, which adds up like a lot. Anyways, uh, down below, we don't have a ton of ways to interact with this stream because it's a temporary one. It's already kind of promoted. We don't want to go, hey, money, money, money. But if you do 500 bits or more, you get to give one of these fine players a hero point, which if anybody gets one, I'll cover. But it'll be able to save your ass and do all kinds of cool stuff. If oh somebody boy. subscribes during the stream, including a Amazon Prime subscription, they count, even though if you're an Amazon Prime member, they're free for you. Everybody gets a hero point. So that'll be nice. I just resubscribed after like months of not being subscribed. Does that count? Did you do it during the stream? Because I can check. I did. Oh. Uh... That counts. Hero points for all of us. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. <laughs> that counts. Oh. Wait, you're saying that counts. Is that counts? not yeah. saying you have. Oh, but Flip dead. Uh, oh, Flip it's wants to know what games. hero points do. Well, you get to decide who they go to. The main thing a hero point does is let you re-roll a roll. But the big one is if that roll is a death save, which this is OSR. This isn't like, oh, I died. I roll a d20 to see. No, there's sometimes you just save to not die. You can spend a hero point to just automatically succeed on. Ooh, useful. Nice. Yeah. I want it. <laughs> Bakery Bear Boy or Hentai Book Bandit. <laughs> All right. You can you can flip a coin and just question your life goals. And then let us know in chat and whoever it is will will uh get that <laughs> bit. God damn it. If you can't Bakery decide, Book you can always Boy. give another five hundred. I like the alliteration. Yeah, I I appreciate it. I'm Bulgo, the bakery book boy. I mean, that is true. Bakery bear boy. Bakery bear boy. Not book boy. Because it's a hentai book girl. Hentai book (laughs) bandit. All right. So with that, you guys are lowering down. You're all crammed into this cage. The cage is about 10 feet wide, which is a massive iron cage. But when some of the people on here are literally a bear, it can get crowded. Now, the other thing to note is if your character sheet is only six feet tall. Yeah, yeah but they're wide. He's got girth. Oh, they, yeah. They, yeah. Girth matters more than length in some instances. And this I is one of those fine. instances. I'm stooping. I'm eight feet. Okay. But unless your character sheet says you have dark vision, which I think the elf might, you don't. This isn't fifth edition. This isn't everybody got dark vision game. I got oh, it. Oh, Bear Boy has it. All right. Oh, yeah. I believe I might. Let me double check. Because if you don't, it is pitch black down there unless somebody finds a way to start a light. I feel like Corwin, as the cage is lowering, is like petting the bear's hair when he's not looking. <laughs> I, I think I, I don't I think like Bulgo it. is going to fight it. Like <laughs> if you're going to pet Bulgo, Bulgo has not said a word. He just kind of sits in the corner of the cage, scratching himself. It's like, Mm. And as has, far as you guys know, he's just a bear. Yeah. <laughs> like, Do, are you wearing the armor on your character sheet? 
the leather if it, armor. I, I guess yes. If if I have leather armor on the in the character sheet, then yeah, he's just like a bear who's got some armor on, but he hasn't said a word, and he's just like, hmm. Oh, I'm like, I'm sorry, bear and armor. It's so sad. What are you doing coming down here? <laughs> clearly a circus bear. This is mm. clearly a circus bear. Orgo <laughs> likes the circus. <laughs> <laughs> and the bear is just talked. However, we have a necromancer, a mystic, a demon, a dog person, and an elf that just talks to animals all the time. So no one's likely shocked. I, like, oh. I will also note both of you get hero points. Yay! Uh. Okay. All right. In the awkward silence, the cage hits the bottom. Again, if you don't have dark vision, it is pitch black. Those I do. I do. You do. Yay. I do. Half the party is like, yeah, this is fine. All right. See anything. Looks like we're here. (laughs) I hope that there's something for us to eat before we have to do any fighting. Oh, bear. Well, if there's not already, there will be some soon for me. Bolgo <laughs> is hungry. <laughs> uh, we'll find you some fo- food, Bolgo the bear. I like <laughs> you, kind, petty elf. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I like you too, strange armored bear. Is nobody else concerned about the person who said that there'd be food soon? Like, I mean, assume that's a person. It's dark now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anybody uh, yes, got Mike. a light? Thank you for proving, because apparently my alert didn't get Yeah, everybody just have a, another hero point. Yay! Subscription. All right. Well, we've reached the bottom. Are we getting out now? Is the cage closed? Are we still closed into a cage? It's basically... Uh, Actually, it'll be one of those where, like, all the walls were held up from the weight of the chain, so it goes, and the chains go slack, and all four walls just kind of fall on hinges on the floor. Like, uh, super loud? Oh, yeah. Honey, we're home. Echo, echo, echo. <laughs> well, there we go. No longer in a cage. <laughs> Things right. are looking up for ball go. Well, I figure there's nothing left to do but for all of you to walk forward. Uh, uh, I, I can, can you guys uh, see down here? I'm, I yeah. think I might have gone I blind. can. <clears throat> uh, Looks great. It's a tunnel. We should definitely go. Just keep heading in that direction. I'm sure nothing untoward will happen. Well, for, let's do this. <laughs> for reference for all of you, I did in the Discord drop a little map to give you an idea. You guys are dropped in Area 1, which is a massive cavern. We're talking, what, about 200 feet wide by 100 feet. Ooh. So it echoes in every direction. Those with dark vision, until a light's shown up, you're not going to be able to see color, but... There is a spiral circling the floor of this cavern. Kind of like at the end of the yellow brick road. Quite wide, quite deep. Everyone will notice that there is a metallic odor in this room. It smells of pennies. Hmm. Maybe there's some money down here. Is I don't think that's money. <laughs> Uh, uh, I think it's money. <laughs> are there any undead within 200 feet? Within 200 feet? I sense undead. Oh, motherfucker. <laughs> okay. There are there are <laughs> a dozen undead over in, to give you reference, because you have the big old map, over in Area 3 on that map, there are a dozen undead. They don't appear to be humanoid. They're squat Kind of like fat dogs. Follow-up question. Is there any fire within 400 feet? Unless someone makes it. No, not in 400 feet? No. Okay. I can sense fire. I know. That one I read and remembered. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, we gotta get a fire going or something. I can't see anything down here. Fire would be good. We could cook up something to eat. Oh, I can cook you up something real good, Mister. What? Bear. You can cook something up real good. Real good. I like you too. Take you to Spicyville. <laughs> he looks a little unsure about Spicyville, but seems to be willing to to let it slide for the. He's open-minded. Let's <laughs> say so you guys do all have basic gear on you, so anyone can attempt to start a fire unless you have something specifically in your packs that's a fire starter, which I don't think it gave anybody. Uh, so that would be. Guy oh no! It, it, your fire powers specifically say you cannot start fires. You can only control them once they're there. It's a great big, uh, up glorious middle finger. But anyone can make a wilderness survival roll. If you don't, if you. I'm have doing it. it. If not, it's wisdom. But. I'm you, doing that. You know, how do I? Nature. How do I make any roll? Okay, so your wilderness survival should have what your final bonus is. Like it kind of has how many ranks. Total of five. So you roll a d20 plus five. And given that that the DC for this is easy and therefore a five, don't roll a one. I rolled the 16, so that's a 21. How much fire would you like to make? (laughs) Uh, A significant amount. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so... You pull out some kindling. You probably sweep up some things that have fallen from the hole all the way down here. Make a nice big pile. As the I'm only light this- I'm doing this by is by the light from the from the hole. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is true. You're in pitch darkness, so there'd be a minus <laughs> six to this, which I'm, is fine because uh, you're still rolling a fifteen. Yanto's going to kind of take a, a a couple of steps back, so he's not near where this fire is going to be. I'm standing right next to it. All right. With a 15, as you light it, you finally get a spark. Anyone who can't, actually, everybody, because even if you have dark vision, it's black and white until a couple yellow flashes go off. There's a spark, another spark, and then the kindling goes up. Big old fire that whips up and around your character, Mike. All right. I'm on fire. Yeah, Mike. Well, you're standing in the kindling. So yeah, you're just, this is more like it. Nothing happens to me. Yeah, nothing Don't happens to him up or his gear. Makey boy. <laughs> uh, uh, I would probably just like grab like a flaming something and start carrying it out of the fire. Yeah, I I believe one of the things you can do is you can just like kind of grab like a ball of fire once you have yeah. it. You just have to maintain it. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So I feel like Corwin would grab a torch as well. You know. Even though he can see. All right. So you guys have fire, which means you have light. You can now see heading in multiple directions. Our necromancer, Yanto, you sent undead up in area three, which is to the north, down past area two. You guys can also see it splits off to the east, which would be area seven. Oh, actually, they count as undead too. Uh, so you also sense five undead down that way. Yay, undead everywhere. <laughs> yeah, this level has a lot of undead. Can I, can I, while they're doing whatever they're doing, can I spend five minutes doing a ritual? Yes. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and speak with the dead. I can talk to any undead within a hundred feet. Uh, 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 and right. I'm just gonna. Uh, may I, I while you're doing that ritual, may I do something real quick? What is our goal down here? Survive. I'm What's... looking for something. Okay. I just want to get through. I was told that I don't have to go to the death jail if I make it through this, and then I can keep on eating instead of dying. And the that death jail. True. The death right. jail. Okay. Right. Yanto, you begin doing a ritual. What does your ritual look like as you start um, doing this? He Yanto has on him a, a jar of bones and he literally like just 
uh, spreads them out uh, and then like arranges them. And he's just begins like slowly whispering, uh, like just this weird guttural noises under his breath at the bones. All right. They begin vibrating. Who do you want to talk to first? The ones uh, to the north or the. Whoever ones... I sense is closest. All right. The ones to the east are a bit closer. All right. Uh, then I'm just going to ask them, uh, what is your purpose? We were to protect our master. And who is your master? Lord Skrillik. He has he died. Okay. Same. Uh, <laughs> is he looking for a, like a business partner or, you know? <laughs> Give me, uh, what is it, persuasion in this? I always want to just call it charm. Yeah, give me a persuasion roll. So that's charisma if you don't have persuasion. Okay, uh, so I'm assuming that I got, I have a 12, so I'm just rolling with no modifier. No bonus, no modifier. All right, let's see how this turns out. That is a 10. A 10. You speak to us like the master did. Come and we shall negotiate. All right. Uh, I, I think it'd be a good idea if we went east. All right, sounds like as good an idea as any to Borgo. Wait, What's why? the east? I don't know. I just have a good feeling about the east. I have a good feeling about the west. The west there. is a sheer wall. <laughs> well, you. now Borgo doesn't know what to think. Um, <laughs> I just don't know who put this guy in charge. I'm just making a suggestion. He seems to know something. What do you know? <laughs> well, I don't know what he knows, but I know that those bones just vibrated. Your bones vi- what? There's <laughs> bones on the ground. He sprinkled them on the ground. They were vibrating. Oh. Uh, wow. Well, <laughs> vibrating bones, huh? What's that about? Is that a crime? I don't know. I'm not a cop. And you know you're not. You were on fire. Or am I? Or are you? You have to tell me if you are. <laughs> Damn, you got me there. <laughs> I feel like this is the start of some naughty strip tease. Or am I? Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> it's going to get hot. <laughs> right. Set myself on fire. Stop it down there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to actually make a quick roll. Oh, they're clueless. I rolled a one. There could be right. all kinds of shenanigans at this point. Boy, I guess if everyone I wants to go east, we can go east. Huh? Yeah, I will, whatever. I will share my info with all of you. Uh, I can sense the presence of uh, like individuals such as myself. Um, and there are more of them to the north than there are to the east. Question. Can I tell what he is? All right, we've all seen the artwork. Uh, your spellbook does look like the book on the image. It it's a Necronomicon. It's just it's made of faces. Hmm. But, but oh, what I know, I mean, he has a book <laughs> make of made of faces. Infer what you want. Does He's he very smell very like gaunt. a corpse to me. Yes, he does. Oh, I would. I should probably tell if he smells like a corpse. Yeah, I yeah, assume the dog, dog the dog person could tell that I was dead. <laughs> <laughs> You're oh, very nearly dead. Mostly yeah. dead. Yeah, you're not undead. They, but yeah, I'm you're not, not undead. Alive. They do specify you're not undead because things I'm, that heal undead don't help you. But you're you're mostly dead. Yeah, you're past I your died expiration once. date. I died and then I came back. Yeah. I don't feel like I could eat you if I needed to, and that makes me not trust you that much. But well, uh, the feeling's not mutual. If you die, I will definitely eat you. Oh, oh my. Let's change the subject. 
I guess I can respect that. Thank you. Most people uh, can't. I'm not saying I would kill you to eat you, but if you were already dead and I needed sustenance. I understand. The need to feed is one that truly motivates. Speaking of which, I'm tired of sitting here. Which way are we going? And Bulgo slams his hand on the ground and it kind of like rumbles a little bit. I'm hungry. Let's go somewhere so we can find food. The well, east, it is then. Uh, it's just, yeah. yeah, let's just go east. Uh. Yeah, well, I don't want to see more of this guy type people than I have to. No, offense. that seems incredibly uh, like prejudicial. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, maybe. I, like I, I have a severe medical condition in that I have to eat and consume flesh to survive. Show hey, I don't need to, but I just do it. It tastes good if you cook it right. I like right. East. It sounds like East. What the like fuck East. have I gotten myself into? <laughs> this is being said as you guys start gathering up your stuff and heading out. I, I will some fire. I, I will say, Bolgo, something to think about your character. Uh, it only specified that you had to have two medium weapons, so you can decide what the hell those are. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, let me think about it for yeah, a moment. Yeah, no. <laughs> I was like, before any potential combat comes in, I figured I'd bring it up. So you guys start trekking east, discussing whether or not things are okay to eat or not eat. You can easily happens. head towards where the skeletons are, because you sense where they are. Yes. I would like to go there quietly. Oh yeah, give me a stealth check. Oh, I figured out my it's, weapons. Uh, uh, with the stealth, I've got a 16. Okay, cool. I'll take note of that. I feel like Corwin kind of falls by and is like, starts walking next to Oriana. So here we are in the caves. What do you think? You've been awfully quiet back here. Well, I think most of these people are insane. <laughs> I think that... Let's not die because they might eat us. <laughs> yeah, I agree. So, um, yes, I'm Oriana. Nice to meet you. Let's uh, survive. Yeah, indeed. Um, I then also I kind of like the bear. He's as as you guys are saying that, and those in I front may not are be part of this conversation, heading, but I love it. <laughs> heading towards this area, kind of leaning out from around the wall, is a skeleton. Just one skeleton foot up on the wall, leaned back, hands with its thumb bones tucked into its hip hip bones. He's so chill. Yeah, well, this guy's way cooler than you. Are you kidding me? I'm just gonna shoot him with a bow. I was gonna say, do you have noted how long uh, speak to dead? Lasts. It it only lasts it lasts uh, a d10 minutes so it's oh. probably not yeah actually I will roll that because you guys have screwed around but not well, ten minutes screwed around yeah not not quite ten minutes screwed around let me get down into this into my Perry the plot agent P mug actually you got ten minutes so everyone else. Mm -hmm. Just see a, a skeleton turn its head towards you guys, and the mouth open a little bit. You hear. So you wish to negotiate? Yeah. Yes, I do. Please take us to your master. Cool, cool. And it begins to get up off the wall, creaking. This is rude of me. I am so sorry. My name is Yanto. What what may I call you? The master simply called me Corpse Three. What what about Tiffany? You seem like a Tiffany to me. He does seem like a Tiffany. <laughs> it makes me feel pretty. Well It stops for it the skeleton stops for a second, its head swivels back towards everyone else. I like to feel pretty. <laughs> and then swivels back and begins walking. Who doesn't? 
Who? That's understandable. Yanto, right. what is this about a master? I, I want to say something, but I'm stealthed. <laughs> <laughs> so, there are... That's just, that's skeleton talk, you know. There are five skeletons. I, I don't know. Just kind of hanging out back here. There's another one leaning against a wall. The other three are down on the floor shooting dice, but it's not dice. It's like a couple pinky bones. Knuckle bones. <laughs> the one that can speak to us is here to negotiate. That I am. How's it going? <laughs> We're dead. Hey, same. All right. So, what is it you wish to negotiate? Well, this is sensitive. You see, uh, my, uh, not exactly friends, the people I've traveled here with, uh, we're all trying to make it out of this cave. So I'm just happen to be wondering, you know, you could help us out. We could help you out. You have five friends. Friends is an no, incredible. No, there's only four creature. actually, because yeah. they don't see yeah. Ellis. Because Ellis stealthed. You have uh, four friends. Friends is a it's, it's a strong term. Compatriots. Uh, co-conspirators, I would say. <laughs> like, okay. I don't know if I can say that in this voice. Fair enough. You said you wouldn't eat him, but could you eat him? We <laughs> can could give try. you... We can give you four allies for the payment of four. Oh, I can make my own ally. I'm... I'm already. I'm way ahead of you. I, uh, in that regard, uh, can I ask your name? I'm in charge. I am corpse number one. Okay. Well, that's not going to do. I already gave three the name Tiffany. Uh, so how about you were uh, given a name? <laughs> as bones start rattling. Tiffany is a free. And skeleton. Tiffany is such a pretty name. <laughs> Give yeah. me a name. Okay, I'm feeling uh your chaplain? <laughs> chaplain. Chaplain and Tiffany, it's cute. Yeah. It's formal. Ship it. I yeah. like chaplain. Give me a so, persuasion roll. You could call him chap for short. Or chappy. Or chap you no longer need a persuasion roll. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure about this chaplain, but Chappie will do. <laughs> Chappie it makes a lot more sense for this. And he reaches down into the dust, picks up a page boy cap, dusts it off, and puts it on. <laughs> Chappie. <laughs> you no longer need to roll. <laughs> the rules of ours. Those who come Replace those who leave. Five by five, four by four, three by three, we do not care. Hmm. I'm gonna just put this out there. I, I, not against what's going on, but uh, just, I worry about, I, I imagine there's more to this uh, endeavor than just this and couple of shambling skeletons. Not the best compatriots for probably what is to come. There is far more, and your ritual has now cut out. <laughs> oh yeah, you know, you can kill them all. <laughs> <laughs> you just said that out loud? Yeah. Oh, all right. I'm gonna let an arrow loose. Uh, I'm gonna let an arrow loose as he says you can kill them all. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm down. It's just they're not very, skeletons aren't very 
strong, and also you can't eat them when they die. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> you can make a wicked stock out of their bones, though. Yeah. If there is any marrow in them bones, um, they could make good sucking sticks. I was, I was actually thinking about the stock. <laughs> One of the skeletons just pipes up. Did someone say sucking sticks? <laughs> <laughs> Somehow we all understand. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> One word we understand. Some things are language. universal. <laughs> this, this is the one skeleton that can speak normally. <laughs> yeah. Just doesn't want to talk about anything else. All right, but yeah, no. If you're attacking, you you were hidden. Um, I'll give you a surprise round. All right. Uh, how and do I actually, attack? So you should have a bonus to attack for melee and bonus to attack for ranged on your character sheet. And I'm actually going to go grab a pencil because I realized I don't have a pencil. And I'm going to need that. Uh, oh, sure, bring a sucking is. stick. I would. I think they would make good sucking sticks, but uh, that's assuming they still have marrow, which, by the condition of those bones, I'm not so sure about. No, they oh, tend to dry out that. real quick. Yep, yep. It, if it, you it. find old bones, there's nothing worth sucking. I like how three of them are discussing the the benefits and like practicalities of eating people and their skeletons that are left behind while the other three of us are just like <laughs> Yeah, like that is a point. I'm not saying I prefer eating people, it's not what I like to do. I prefer eating delicious pies or tasty honey. But if people's the only option, I'm just saying Borgo's got to eat. You know, you and I have the same opinion on this matter, because I would also like to be eating pies, but I physically can't. People is literally the only option. Do you two ever considered a career in show business? The professionalism. I, mean, I no often one. think that I was, I was in show business before I died, but I don't have any memory of it. Oh no, the three that Let's are talking make some about new memories when we get out of here. The three that are talking about eating people are, are talking about making a, a, a show. <laughs> I mean, dinner and a show. I'm down. All right. So, you. Use this before. Let's use it again. You attack from the shadow, so you have advantage also. So, you'll get to roll twice, take the higher of the two. All right. I've got a plus one for, for range for some reason. Yep. Probably from your decks. Yeah. Okay, that first one is a nine total. Okay, that will not hit. The second one is an eight total. Excuse well, the me. The nine didn't just... hit. Uh, <laughs> arrow flies. <laughs> misses. All right. Now, who has the highest decks of you guys? <sighs> not me. Mine is 14. Mine's 14 as well. Mine's an 18. Uh, I, I think that's uh, going to be the highest. That oh, mine's a 15. Yeah. That's nice. All right. So, Andy, with an 18, you have an initiative bonus. Okay. Listed on your sheet. Roll a d6 and add that initiative bonus and tell me what you get. Five. Five. Was, you beat the four I just rolled, which means oh. you guys get to act first. Yay! So he says that arrows shoot from the shadows as you guys see the ranger kind of perched up with his bow. Missing. What do you guys want to do? We can decide. Well, actually, we'll go clockwise. We'll just keep that. So, Yondo, Yondo, what do you want to do? Uh, I guess Yonto is just going to try and use this longsword that he was handed on the way down that he doesn't really know how to use. So he just You actually have do you you have a combat skill, right? Uh on your see. skills. Combat training? I have combat training. Yes. That means you're proficient with that sword. Okay, cuz it, it said nice. on the gears list that I was untrained. Okay. 
I thought it had, oh no, that's right. The sword is medium. You don't have a high enough yeah. combat training in it to be tr- proficient no. yet. I've got, I've got a sword. You're, I've got you're, knives, you're, which will probably be pretty good at. But... You're proficient in those, but yeah, the sword, yeah. you, you're working on it. You're still, you're still learning. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to just like, like a little boy with a stick, swing this sword at something. That's right. Swing it sideways. Untrained weapon means you have a minus four to this roll. Okay, so I will roll. Uh, so that would be if it's a d20, uh, then it's uh, it'd be an eight. An eight is gonna whiff. The best part is, is the minus four is why you missed. <laughs> All right, we'll go. I, okay, I'm useless so you, with these. You told me I could pick any two medium weapons, right? Yeah. I wasn't able to like find a weapons list in the book. Oh, that's the, you just tell me and I'll give you a dice. Okay. So as the fighting starts, um, Bolgo pulls from like a hatch in, or a, a like thing in his armor, a big or like a, a medium sized like pitchfork and a medium sized like a uh, knife sword. <laughs> All right. So he's got a fork and knife. All right. he's ready the, to fight with. The fork deals a d6 and the knife deals a d8. Okay. And he's just going to go, all right, I hope they've got marrow. And he's just going to uh, swing at one of the skeletons. Yeah. yeah, you're not high enough level to have multiple attacks yet, but... I just imagine he yeah. kind of does it in like a... <laughs> yeah. I'm a bear. I just kind yeah. of swing we'll things. Just, we'll just use the d8. Uh, yeah, so give me an attack roll. Okay. And this is with my melee. So this says, yes. uh, so my melee is plus two slash plus three. Is the plus three just when I'm raging? Yes. Do you know? Okay. Yes. All right, so that is a 13. That hits. All right. And then I roll D8. Yep. Uh, is there a is my strength added to damage? It is added to damage. Oh boy! Then I rolled a two, but it's a five total. Yeah, you kill it. <laughs> <laughs> it just clatters. Right. Oh yeah, these are dry bones for sure. Another failure. All right, Ellen, what do you do? All right, seeing how quickly that um, skeleton went down. I'm not going to use magic. I'm not going to waste a spell. I am going to pull out a staff that I have and um, hit it. Hit Chappie. All right, yeah. Not Chappie. Not Chappie. Yeah, he's bad. <laughs> no, please kill Chappie. He doesn't deserve the name. That's he's mine. What'd you get? 11. Miss. You swing, and uh, it's good enough where, like, it would clip him but not hurt him. Mm. All right, Mike, what do you do? All right, so Leo Fiery, like, kind of, like, turns, like, he's talking to an audience, but there's nobody there, and he's just like, now, the key to a good stock, if you really want that richness of flavor, is to roast the bones first. And then he turns to one of the skeletons, and he's going to blast the fire in his hands at the skeleton. Um, All right. Is that a ranged attack roll? That is a ranged attack roll. Okay, cool. Let's see. All right. That is a... What's my ranged gun? 17 to hit. That hits. You haven't amplified the fire, so it's a d6. Yep. For three damage. I'm going to roll see how much health this one has. Oh, he had one health. Yeah, you roast the bones. I have a question. Yeah. Do we know what our hit points are? Uh, does that I, that was actually something I brought up when it first came up, and nobody respond. Does it just give a D amount? It does. I'm, yes. Everybody roll for hit points. The dice you are rolling is oh, it, it should said, actually tell you. Was it in the book? Wrong? It said that hit points are just two D six and with a minimum of five plus Constitution. I think. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know if it's different sheet. for different. Uh, the yeah. character sheet. The character sheet says D six plus one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, those actually should say two d six. That okay. makes me feel a lot better. Yeah, d six minimum five. It said in the yeah, book. Yeah, minimum five. It's a big, Much big better. thing. 
Okay. It makes me feel better about rolling two on the first die. Uh, so I'm at, I've got a total of eight. So you got an eight instead. You have eight hit yeah. points. I've got 13. Yeah, you have Jesus. a lot of health. Leo eats well. Uh, I got 14. Hell yeah. I get uh, plus five. Sweet. Yeah. Because your I'm class tough. has given you health points as well. You're a bear. As well. <laughs> I'm a bear. I'm a bear. <laughs> All right. Uh, Eric, what'd you get? So we got this never down. I have eight hit points. All right. Same. Ellen, what'd you get? I rolled a 12, but I'm minus one. Oh, no. Oh, 11. <laughs> hey, you're still double digits for a cast. You've got more than me. Yeah. <laughs> And Andy, what'd you get? Eight. Hey, nobody rolled a five or lower. So yay. You didn't well, I rolled a six and a one. So that's what... Right. <laughs> five and yeah. you rolled the spread, okay? Yeah. We're good. All right. So we're as we were saying, seven. you torch him, hang around. Andy, what do you want to do? You there, Andy? Andy, you're, you're muted. muted. You're muted. Okay, I didn't realize you're muted because your hand's so low. Andy, Andy, you're muted. Uh, no, no, I gotcha. Um, okay, uh, looks like you were still talking. I was looking at my sheet. Uh, I'm going to use my bow, really. All right. Um, and I am going to fire at the one that is not on fire i guess closest to yeah there's know. three left we'll say they're the three unnamed ones okay and oh yeah wait. tiffany died alvin simon theodore <laughs> I, wait chappy was just attacked but oh chappy got attacked a moment ago oh. yeah All right. alvin simon on and fire? theodore yeah chappy got torched i rolled chappy had one hit point so like okay he was called number leader. one for a reason. I'm going to put on his flaming hat. I rolled a four. You put on his flaming hat? Yes. Roll of a magic hat. save. <laughs> Sorry, Andy. Didn't mean to no, steal your thunder. You're totally fine. You're not stealing anything from me because I rolled terribly. So <laughs> definitely do what you want to do. So do you add the number next to the saving throw uh, to whatever you roll or is it let me quickly check because i know so I those numbers throws... are pretty high so i feel like it's no like a that's roll a roll under, under. that's it's a, a roll, roll under. under yeah yeah that's i rolled roll a one. Oh. okay All nice right. i'll note that all right andy <laughs> what are you doing uh so i use my bow and arrow or i thought i was going to but i rolled a three. Oh yeah so you just fumble with it fire high all right ellis <clears throat> all right uh i'm just gonna fucking run in go in another sword right. uh don't know how far away they were i presume i can get there i can run it three times my move uh you can go at a Third, I was going to say, you can go a third of that and attack it without penalty. If you go your full move speed, you uh, take a penalty. Presumably I wasn't too far away. Now, you were stealthy. Things were lumped back. What's your move? Twelve. Twelve. Okay. Yeah. Four, twenty feet. Yeah, that's fine. You can go in without penalty. All right. All right. I'm going to go in there and I'm just going to be shouting uh, something along the lines of you're all Tiffany and just fucking start uh, start attacking with the, with the rapier. All right. It's a 17 plus my two. Okay. 19. Yeah, that hits. Okay. And what's my damage on this? D6 for the rapier. Cool. Got a two. Do I add my strength to damage on you that? You do add your strength for a melee attack. Nice. That's four. Four. That's enough to kill him. Damn it. All right. They're up. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, and three. 
One begins moving on to Andy's character. The other begins moving on to Yondo's character. They're going to try and take your skin. They need that, though. They need that. It's cold. <laughs> I mean, does Yonto really need skin? No, but I am attached. To that. All right, Andy, <laughs> 19. I'm pretty uh, sure that hits. Yeah, I am pretty sure that hits. Let me look, but yeah. Oh, no, you have a 20 AC. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, I'll need the. All right, they begin clawing at you and deal three damage to you as it claws at you. Yanto, it's trying to steal your skin. And it rolled a four. My AC is 11. Yeah, I would hope it's better than a four. <laughs> All right, so next person. I'm just going to roll randomly to see if he gets to roll this round. Four. Ellen. Roll a d6 plus your initiative modifier. Five. They rolled a six. <laughs> so, actually, since that one failed getting Yanto's skin and couldn't get a hold of you, it's going to keep moving. Over to, you know, it's real cold. It would like to get super warm with a fur coat. It's going to Bulga. Which one. Oh, you know, you know what I I said. I'll it go rolled a five. It's not doing well. It it, it like whacks at Bulgo, and Bulgo just kind of lumberingly turns towards it. It's like, what are you trying to do, little Skellington? The one on Andy's character is if you could still speak skeletons, it would basically be like, go away, I'm trying to fit in as it's trying to <laughs> climb into Andy's skin. It rolled a four, so it failed. You guys are up. No room, no vacancy at this end. We'll go Skin. opposite direction this time. Ellis, what do you want to do? Uh, there's some bones trying to get in my friend. Uh, yeah. Friend's a, a strong word, but you're not talking about <laughs> eating people, so that's pretty good. Um, so I've got a rape here. Let's go Why in. Why are there so many games where half the table's cannibals? I know. Uh, I mean, cannibals? I'm not cannibals, eating bears here. Let's be real. Stop. Your arguments are invalid. Yeah. And I specifically in the ga no. in the game's description no. have to eat people. He does. It's, it's, you <laughs> have to. If I don't do it, I die. Right. Does it say human flesh? <laughs> Again. Then perish. Does it, it says say human flesh. It's humanoid. I have, eat, I have to eat I have to eat a fourth of my body weight in dead humanoid flesh every day. Dang it. Yeah. Yeah, mine says that too. <laughs> Weird. Uh, mine implies that. <laughs> it's this game. It's not us. Half of this is. Uh, half of this seems like we're we're not going to eat each other. The other half is going to eat that half. Though. Like what they're seeing right now are like the little chickens. Like. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So Ellis, all right, make uh, that attack. Make that attack. Don't roll a one. Bitch. You just roll a one? Yes. You fucking roll you damage. Oh, oh no. Andy. I'm sorry. Uh fell off. Where did it go? Oh, that's other things falling. Um let's just roll a different roll the other one. It appears to I somehow lost my very large six six sided die. <laughs> Okay, that was pointless. I'm sorry, Andy. How many health did you have, say you have? No, no. What'd you roll? We're, we're going to be knocking at some mechanics have, may, right now. I may or may not have maxed that. So it's six? So six plus my two. Oh, yeah. Oh, you get plus two damage for range? For my strength. Oh, no, that's right. You're no, in melee. I'm running in. I, apparently, this ra apparently, my ranger is terrible at range. Yeah. You killed me, so good job. All right, so he's at zero. Andy. <laughs> Give me a death save. Oh, no. <laughs> this isn't how I expected this to go. I thought well, hey, you would be killing them. Andy does have a hero point, so he is guaranteed to pass this. We, we also all have survival. Andy. What's, what's a death save again? 
the, on your list of saves, there should be one called death. You need to roll under that number. And you can re-roll that, but then that number goes down. Yeah, we right. Well, the big thing, the hero point, if you spend it on the death save, it's just an auto succeed. Oh, right. I was trying to be helpful. I'm going to have to re-roll that. Well, if you spend the point, you just succeed. Okay. Because the death save. I'll just, yeah, I'll use the point. All right. So you are currently considered KO'd. I got a table for that. You're out of action. So let me roll this D6 to see how. Don't eat me. I'm not dead yet. (laughs) Well, I can oh. sense dead, so I can tell that you're not dead. <laughs> yeah. But it, if that changes, you know. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Andy, it's no longer your turn. You're, you're out. Uh, Mike, what do you want to do? Uh, well, I guess I'm going to throw some fire. Seems like the thing to do. So I watch uh, Ellis strike down my good friend Corwin. (laughs) And I'm like, oh, man, looks like you need some help over there. They always say too many hands can spoil the soup. But, you know, if you don't have the right hands, the soup gets spoiled anyway and your friend dies. I don't think they say that. That is an 11 to hit. I think that's a miss. That's Friend. a mess. So I just throw some more fire, but it just like goes off. And yeah, it just goes. Out. It's close. It's a miss by one. So it's just. Yeah. All right. Ellen, what do you want to do? Um, Can I heal Corwin from KO? You can. Okay. One of your spells is heal. All right. Then I'm going to go up to him, knowing that he is one of the few people here who doesn't want to eat me. And uh, I'm going to heal him. All right. So what does your healing spell look like? Um, My hands glow, and then one of my rune tattoos on another part of my body, like maybe the side of my neck also glows. And I... Do I have to roll something, or do I just roll the... You just heal, and it, you roll how much heals. Okay. It heals. You're not targeting anything. He's not going to resist. All right. Uh, that is seven. Seven. You have seven I, hit I points. Spring back up, and I'm like, ah, oh, yawn, stretch. Like, <laughs> there is still a skeleton trying to get into your body. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, what happened? Oh, oh, you. <laughs> You're still here. Just stretch throws skeleton off. <laughs> <laughs> Volgo, what are you doing? Volgo is a little distressed by the fact that, um, the the nice fur petting elf went down but uh i I, so how many skeletons are still up there's the one that's on um, corwin and then there's the one on you the one on me it moved over to you i think that's my top priority honestly (laughs) so i'm just like what are you doing little skeleton (laughs) and i'll just try and uh decapitate it not a cold shot no (laughs) All right. Uh, oh boy, that's a um, that's a seventeen. Yeah, you hit. Yay! And I do ten damage. Oh yeah, it's not gonna survive. It's it's dust. So yeah, uh, Bulgo just goes, "What are you doing, little Skellington?" And with one quick swipe, just kind of goes boop and pops the head off of <laughs> it, and it just. Flies off into the distance. You hear a shattering in the distance. Right. Yanto, what do you want to do? Um, well, first of all, I want to clear off that Yanto doesn't want to eat people. He is just, <laughs> he is willing to. He, he like, he's not actively like, mm, I can't wait to eat these people. Like, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like the part just like we feel like you're more hung up on this than we are. Yeah. Uh, the we, fact that you have to say it is a little suspicious. Honestly, y'all are bringing it up way capable. more than he is. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's just trying to survive. Uh, you know. So yeah, capable. he's he's gonna see this skeleton trying to claw into somebody's skin, 
And I guess I'll just <laughs> I'm gonna just try and swing this sword again because mm. like I think things are are probably handled pretty well. I think I can just <laughs> swing this sword. I'm just... helping. <laughs> Uh, I can all just foot. attack this skeleton and just like murder Corwin. No, I know. I'm like, can I just get out from under it? Can I just right. wait, guys? I'm just. Can you just... Right. So yeah, he drags the sword, which he, he he struggles to keep off the ground, and swings it and and gets uh, with a negative four a six. Ah, uh, damn. Okay. So with honestly, Yondo, you get to uh, roll initiative this round. Okay. 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 What am I rolling? Uh, you should have an initiative bonus. You roll a d6. Oh, yeah. D6 plus my initiative bonus of zero. Uh, six. Hey, everybody goes before them. Swing in the pendulum back. Yanto, why don't you make that untrained attack again? Yeah, I'm going so to tr- try and catch him on the back it. swing. Just, <laughs> yeah, he's still spinning. A lot better. I rolled an 18, so that's a you 14. Hit. You hit. Yeah. <laughs> Roll damage. Okay, how, how much damage is on my untrained longsword? It is a D8 modified by your uh, strength. Okay, so a D8 minus one. Okay, uh, so seven. You kill it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hit it. Crumbles. I just windmail. That's like, I didn't have any plan, and I thought the momentum will just drag me, so that's why I missed the first time, because I just, like, he just starts spinning and uses his momentum to bring it around for a good smack. And then he just broadsides it. You didn't mean to miss the first time. You're just going with it at that point. (laughs) I feel like Corwin sees this happen, and as he's coming back around the second time, he, like, uses all of his strength to, like, push him into it. (laughs) (laughs) He would have missed that time, too. We just kind of gave him a shot. (laughs) <laughs> there was an assist. Yeah. Um, I'm like, whoa, okay. Skeletons. Do you think you can suck the marrow from their bones? I'm just curious now. Hmm? Uh, Bo- Bolgo reaches down and grabs one of the bones and breaks it. Looks inside, and I assume that they are they are dusty and dry and old. <laughs> yeah. When you crack them open, the marrow is gone. The bones have been injected with gold. Oh, darn it. They're just full of gold. <laughs> oh. I told you I smelled money in here. Oh. Well, you can't okay. eat gold. I must warn you. you. I must gonna... warn you. They they only do this as it's it's kind of a curse. I I have as an expert in all things undead, I can do my best to uh decurse all of the the gold that's in here. But trust me, you don't want what happens to you when you take this? You don't want bone gold. I'm, no, I'm taking this. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. I, I'm, I'm pretty cursed already. I'm in this. I'm story. taking this. You can't stop me. I and I feel like I'm obviously totally by this because it's like all nature knows nothing about undead. Is like, oh yeah, totally cursed gold. Don't want it. And hands it to Yon, Yonto. Oh, and then no. See, the thing is, I believe you. I'm taking it anyway. Yeah, and then as Yanto holds some of these, he goes, actually, you know what? These are quite heavy. Yeah, sure. Keep them in your pack. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and Olgo, of later. course, does not see the appeal. <laughs> so you can uh, make a note. You have 255 gold worth of bones. Oh, we, we hit the bone jackpot. The bone pot. There's gold in them, their bones. <laughs> All right. And with that, it is 10.30, so we are going to do a five-minute bio break. All right. I am biological, so that's good. We'll be right back. I'm vegetable. Uh, You know, actually... You're playing the most phenomenal game ever created. Your skin grows cold from your first glimpse. The enormous beast. It's a product of your imagination. Survival depends on a quick, decisive... Your choices are limited. Stand and fight... Use your lightning bolt. Victory is yours. Win the treasure. TSR Hobbies. Dungeons and Dragons games. Products of your imagination. Challenge your imagination to come alive and to battle with the creatures of Dungeons and Dragons. Grapple against the forces of evil as a Marvel Comics superhero. 
hot adventure and glory as Indiana Jones. The all-new role-playing games of TSR and Dungeons and Dragons. Unleash the power of your imagination. Open your mind to Dungeons and Dragons computer game from Mattel Electronics. It will lead your imagination down a dungeon labyrinth wherein lies the dragon's treasure. Steal his treasure, but make no false moves. For in Dungeons and Dragons, a dead end is a dead end. Dungeons and Dragons from Mattel Electronics. Only from the producers of Dungeons and Dragons games. From the very center of the great spiral galaxy to the only planet offering Star Frontiers game. Driven by a force unstoppable. Not knowing why, but programmed to purchase. Star Frontiers game. Star Frontiers role-playing games, products of your imagination. your own hobbit slam 20 delicious options like sweet potato pecan pancakes hearty breakfast sausage and honey cake french toast a meal to satisfy the hungriest of hobbits see the hobbit the desolation of smaug all seek it all crave it and now you can own it possess the most spectacular and exciting vision of middle earth they are coming when the lord of the rings comes home on vhs and dvd this ring it must be destroyed. If you do not find a way, no one will. The Lord of the Rings on VHS and DVD. I know what I must do. Claim possession, August 6th. Now relive the magical adventures of the movie Willow with these amazing characters that bring the story to life. There's the heroic swordsman, Matt Mardigan. I'll win this war for you. The evil sorceress, Bab Morda. The dreaded General Cain. I'll crush the rebels. And brave Willow himself. The epic battles, good versus evil. You can bring the magic of Willow home with collectible figures, vehicles, and accessories, each sold separately. Willow, the magic lies within. Enter the world of Tau, where mighty warriors battle the evil warlord. Kick into action. Seize the power. Fight the forces of darkness. Who to the rescue? Be a warrior of virtue. Real power! The rules have arrived. Warriors of virtue action figures each sold separately. He's Hercules! Tower of power! He's Hercules! Feels power and might! He's Hercules! Tower of power! He's Hercules! Lost the master of spite! Slash his power sword against the man-eating Cerberus. Shoot his power bow and arrow at the three-headed Hydra and wield his power assault blades to cut down the evil of Kid. He's Hercules! Tower of power! He's Hercules! Legendary Hercules and monsters all sold separately. Figures do not be on their own. 
from the hit series Hercules the Legendary Journeys. Here are three new exciting episodes on video cassette, starring Kevin Sorbo, Michael Hurst, and for the first time ever, Lucy Lawless as Xena Warrior Princess. Boy, you know how to show a guy a good time. Don't talk, fight! A trilogy of her debut episodes featuring her transformation from evil. When Hercules realizes that he's killed his best friend, he'll be ripe for slaughter. Into good. We're on the same side. All the action. Humor. Please don't kill me, please, I beg you! And heart-pounding excitement that's made Xena the worldwide phenomenon that she is. In three original episodes that started it all. The Warrior Princess. Is this what you do to all your... And it yeah. only goes up like one per session, I think it said, right? Yeah. It restores. So it's like luck in DCC or? Yes, it's very much yeah. like luck in DCC. By the way, hey, we're back. Yay. Hey. Hey. Oh. Hey. Yeah, Hello, so everybody. The survival is interesting. It even suggests for like one shots rather than rolling uh, survival like the other attributes. You just give everybody like five survival, I believe yeah. is what it said. Yeah. All right. So, you have uh, vanquished the bones that were, you know, just looking for a job. <laughs> you have uh, obtained many golden bones and the hat of Chappie. Is it still on fire? Is it, it's not ashes yet? On your head, it will perpetually be on fire. Excellent. Oh, yeah, because like none of my gear burns, so. Yeah. But it was already on fire, so it's like half So, it, it stays but at the same level of fire yeah it being on fire on your head just makes it look like you have like these perpetual like flaming frosted tips yes. even better he's never gonna take that off you have a puka <laughs> shell necklace too a puka shell necklace <laughs> <laughs> all right so made of the golden bones what do you guys wanna do? i mean uh... Your the friendly local necromancer knows of about a dozen undead things to the north, but these guys were guarding something or something down here because there's a tunnel behind them. Guess we should check it out. Or yes, me. they said they had a master, uh, one who was they served. I assume a necromancer not unlike me. Uh, a necromancer? That, that explains a lot. Yes. Why don't you have an army of skeletons? Always well, going to ask I the did. same thing. I did. And <laughs> then they arrested me and sent me to prison. <laughs> what happened to the skeletons? They get a job or something? No, they made me let them die, which was hmm. quite unfortunate. I got paid a lot of money to defend a town, so I used the dead to fight off the bandits, and suddenly I'm the bad guy. <laughs> Where did you get the dead bodies, though? Yeah. The Listen. bandits. Yeah. Also, they were the local them. grave. Well, it, yeah. They had an abundance of corpses because they recently had a okay. plague. An abundance <laughs> of corpses. I mean, that's definitely what I refer to the bodies of my loved ones as. Oh, Necro I didn't love them. I didn't know them. <laughs> <laughs> Necromancers are just misunderstood recyclers. Like, that is it. Waste not, you, what not. <laughs> humans are very wasteful, that's for sure. Yeah. I'm the only one here who's disappointed. No. Yes. Um, I kind of can't wait to see what's in that room, though. All right. Uh, so, let's, let's, let's go on. So, oh, wait. Wait. Stealth. <laughs> yeah, give me a stealth roll. Okay. I like I like Nige Bulgo forward first, though. That's a 13. <laughs> so, 
heading on, the tunnel heads into kind of a T-junction. To the north, you see a faint bluish-purple glow from around a corner. To the south, it's in darkness. You can't see what's down there. I'm going to take a little fire off my hat, and I'm going to... How far can I project my fire? Uh, it should be listed on your character sheet. Yeah, 50 feet. Yeah. So down that dark hallway, I'm going to shoot fire 50 oh, feet down. Down to the south? Where you said it was dark, we couldn't yeah. see anything. Yeah. So column of flames goes down, and it splashes. Actually, it would arc right before it hits this of... It goes into another small cave that you can see there is kind of a marble. That's the word I'm thinking of. A marble pillar hmm. with some kind of like sundial or something on top of it. Oh, well, that looks expensive. The pillar itself is about five feet wide. Oh. That looks like a trap. Oh, how tall is the pillar? It is currently sitting at three feet tall. Mm, currently sitting. There is also a faint bluish purple glow to the north. Um, can I send Alfonso to fly down the tunnel and like communicate with him while he's doing it? Which way? To the north or to the south? I mean, you can uh, where, do either. Where the like pedestal thing is. Yeah. <clears throat> And are there any dead things or undead things within 60 feet? Within 60 feet? No. There were. You killed them. I'm like, Alfonso, hey. fly. <laughs> and like, fly them off of my arm. <laughs> Let's out some moth wings. Just. Yep. As a dragon's body with super fast flapping moth wings slowly hovers its way. Doop, doop, doop. <laughs> It exactly is, yeah, it's a stone kind of dais uh, with 12 stones across around the ring. There's a wedge as if it's a sundial, but instead of the numbers for a sundial, there's arcane runes on these like stone, like kind of smoothed out roundish stones sitting within the pillar. I'm like, well, that looks like a puzzle of some sort. That way. Which puzzles, traps, treasure. But what about food? Maybe there's a spell for a bountiful harvest. It's not likely. But more likely, one or more of us will die in the attempt. So then food it's still not my preference to eat people that's thinking four dimensionally i, I think Yonto, again i've said it before it is not my preference um he's just terrible at pet talks you know what since they're all talking i'm gonna go like uh, stealth off uh towards the glowing thing because nobody's looked anything anywhere near the glowing thing okay so as you peek around there's an arcane rune Etched in the rock around the corner. I need you to save versus magic. I rolled a nine. My number is ten. Cool. You feel a sickness in the bottom of your stomach. You feel the breath start to be pulled out of your lungs towards this uh thing. And then you get a hold of your shit and you turn around. <laughs> Am I still, like, within the glow, or... No, uh, no, if you save, you have now left the glow. Unless you want to stay and roll again. I, I'm just asking based on <laughs> what you were saying. Because it, it, I was trying to figure out if it was where the light touches, or where... It's when you uh, saw it. I see it. It's when you saw it. Okay. If you said I turned around. Touches. That's what. That's why I was asking for how that yeah. worked. Gotcha. I'm like, so the glowy thing, what's it like? Do tell. Tell me everything. <laughs> We're all pretty curious. <laughs> you see Looked it. like fun. Uh, it's sick. It's sick. It's oh, sick. it's that rad? It's sick. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, like vomit inducing sick. Cool. Okay. Let's see. Um, is there anything else I down think, there or just yeah. the thing that made you sick? It kind of caught your eye. <laughs> I was a bit distracted by them. No. Well, I say if our options are that strange pedestal or going to the, the glowy thing that makes us sick, I say we go to the pedestal. I say I agree with Bogo. Um, Thank you, Petty Elf. <laughs> Note, when I wasn't looking, it didn't make me sick. So, uh, since the way the other way would be uh, when returning, we would be facing that thing. We walk backwards out. Okay. Okay. It's around a corner. You have to actively it's go around down a corner? That. Yeah. Okay. You have to well, actively go down there to look at it. Don't make eye contact with the orb. Check. Don't look over there in that corner. Resist the glowy thing. Resist the glowy thing. Um, I mean, I didn't have to tell you guys that you already were. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> How are you feeling? You look kind of green. I mean, For a wolf, dog, hybrid thing. I thought I liked you. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I like you, too. It's a good combo, whatever you Excuse have. Excuse me while I look down at you. <laughs> I am eight feet tall. You are eight feet. I am sorry. I am going to go over here to this pedestal. What sure. there? <laughs> um, so, yeah. It's called me canine. I, oh. I, I guess we make our way towards the pedestal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's do so, that before this gets any worse. Uh. Moving up on the pedestal, again, it has kind of a sundial fin on it, and there are 12 runic stones surrounding it. So, these runes, can I use Arcana to, like, figure out what they mean, or is you that can... not use Arcana to get some info. Even not okay. knowing what they mean can tell you something. Okay. Is there a way you can, like, assist in rolls or anything like that? I don't think I found I would use from 5th edition, just give her advantage if you're also trained in Arcana. Okay. I'm, I'm very good at Arcana, believe it or not, so... Yeah, I'd like to help. But yeah, I went to school for this, actually. Didn't pan out. You went to school for this. It's just that you thought you saw an opportunity to make something with magic instead of actually using it. Yeah, I don't want to be one of those. I make things with magic in the tower stop. all day long. You there? All right, you stop. So what'd you get for Arcana? Oh, was that with advantage or no? Uh, it sounds like yeah. If they're helping, you get advantage. You get the okay. Points. Uh, that's better. Uh, sixteen. Okay, so you rolled above a fifteen, but not above a twenty. So above a 15 looking, you'll realize these are runes tied to the void, which depending on how much of the rule book you've read, casters, the void is like the ethereal plane of magic beyond, which is also the realm of nightmares. Sounds fun. However, deciphering them, you don't know, but you do know that they come from the void. Interesting. So it's probably not a good thing to just push them randomly, I say. They do all each appear to like be in a recess. They can be pushed down like buttons. Do we know anything about these symbols? I do not. This is not nature magic. Well, what happens if one of you presses some of them? Well, let's find out. <laughs> I take. Uh, I'm gonna take one of the skeleton arms out of my pack. Oh yeah. Still have the hand attached. I'm just gonna stand like way back and push the nicest looking button. All right. Uh, one and through the least, like it'll kill me. One through twelve o'clock. Which number do you push? I'm just gonna roll. Roll, roll a d12. Five. All right. Roll a d6 to see what the effect is. Uh, oh okay. boy. Always love to hear that. <laughs> Four. Four. Brain of kittens. No. You go and you push it. <laughs> Food. And 
the button begins to glow like sunlight and the light begins to creep up the skeleton arm moving up like a liquid do you drop the arm before it reaches you oh i would definitely drop the arm before it reaches me the arm is now glowing now who wants to pick up the arm is the arm detached from the thing yeah, like once he drops it, it would have fallen and it's still glowing. I'm just making sure. I don't know. Maybe the magic stuck it to the thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can, it, can we like poke it? I want to poke it with like my knife to see if the knife starts glowing. The knife does not start glowing. All right, then I'll pick up the glowing arm. Cool. You have an arm that's glowing. Neat. Look what I got. It's a glowing arm. This thing's great. It's a glowing golden skeleton arm. I can probably sell this for even more now. I know. That is. Whoa, watch, now I can set it on fire and say glow even more. Well, I mean, do we want to try one of the others? Fuck it. It'd probably make an interesting lamp. What about number nine? <laughs> number nine? Roll a d6. Okay. Got a three. You got a three. I'm just doing this by hand, by the way. Yeah. Oh, no. You push it. That one goes black, and all of a sudden, your eyes go pitch black. You're blind. Oh, wow. hmm. What happened? What what happened when you pressed it? You're yeah. not glowing. It seems to have turned out the lights. <laughs> oh, it doesn't uh, seem like that to me. My arm's still glowing. <laughs> right. In fact, it's brighter because of that arm. I, like, stand on my tiptoes and, like, wave my hand in front of his face. I can smell your hand. All right, I got this, guys. I got this. We see it. <laughs> Just stay perfectly still. I'm gonna take the the glowing arm and poke him in the eye with one of the glowing fingers. No, no, no. I'm not staying perfectly still. I can I can hear the fire coming closer. No, it's not fire. It's just glowing. No, it's you. <laughs> You're the fire. You're the That's fire. true. I'm a little bit on fire. A little bit on fire. I can well, cure if, this. If his eyes are dark. And the, the the bones glow. Then we just have to make him push that one again. I like with the his, logic. I with like his it. eyes? No, with his body. <laughs> Let's try it. Hey. You know, lead him over to the glowing button. Somebody got it. <laughs> yeah. So the, the buttons we've pressed are they like? Do they look different from the other buttons? Like, where, are, are they recessed now? Or they the other, they like, come back up? Okay. I'm going to make a roll to see if I know which button it was that I actually pressed or if I was just flailing around randomly with the arm until I hit one. Okay. Okay, I'm good. You're good. I know which button it is. Yeah. (laughs) So you can, uh, if you guys lead him over to the button, he can push the button if he wants. Yeah. We'll be at five o'clock. It begins to creep up his hand, whole body. Touch your eyes. Touch your eyes. He is now, his entire body is white phosphorescent glow except for his eyes which are pitch black <laughs> <laughs> all right well how, how, we how's it going can you see all right it has now it's been 20 really minutes dark. of you guys screwing around and experimenting <laughs> it's still really dark i look around uh, and see if there's like a make him push another button just keep pushing them at this point i'm already i'm already in the dark might as well keep going <laughs> all right Roll a d12, because uh, you won't know which button you're pushing. <laughs> Apparently, I'm on three. All right. Uh, well, you've already pushed that, so you're good. Oh, no, sorry. Oh. That was result three. So roll a d6. One. All right, fine. I'll push this one. As it goes, zzzz, you take six electric damage. <laughs> Did you get your eyesight back? <laughs> Did I? Ten well, minutes later. Only no been, one left to go. Now that it's been 30 minutes, because we're just going to go old school out of combat turns every time I you guys make big decisions. It's 10 minutes. Away. Well, it's been 30 minutes and all the effects end. Except that damage, because like it's not going to heal you. Well... Can I look I, around for a clue so we're not like finally past? You can the- give me an investigation roll. Okay. Well. 
You want some help? I've got a rank in that. Investigation uses wisdom if you're not trained in it. I am not trained. But I'm okay with wisdom. But I, a uh, nine? A nine? Are you, am Are you, I helping you? I was going to say, if you're oh, looking to help, I, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, I, I, Ellis, yeah. also give me an investigation roll. Because you're actually drained, so you have the the one that should be rolling. I've got a 12. Cool. So with this, looking around, your assumption that there should be some kind of clue makes a lot of sense. This is a trial of heroes. This isn't like some mad mage just trying right. to kill everybody. Unless the trial's a ruse. But looking around, you don't see any clues here. There's the entire other side of the cave complex you haven't gone to. Right. I'm like, well, I don't think the answer is standing here and pressing buttons until we all grow an extra arm, go blind, or end up dead. Watching him press them has been pretty entertaining, though. I have <laughs> that is true. I have a suggestion. What if we make the dog press the one that goes blind and then send him to the place that makes you sick if you look? Well, he could also just go to that place and not look at it. <laughs> okay, that's, uh, I guess, yeah, yeah. I yeah. hear what you're saying, and I take the criticism. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm against the plan. I'm just presenting an alternative. I like the alternative. Let's, uh... All right, we got two plans on the board. Let's <laughs> put it out. Uh, I hear a third. Mm -mm, no more options. <laughs> Let's just go. I'm gonna uh, close my eyes. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Close my eyes. Just start running at full speed. <laughs> Is that the, what you're uh, doing? The rune? <laughs> no. <Hang on. laughs> Get to the point where I'd be. Go I'd have to go around the corner and then start move and then start moving in that direction. Hand okay. on the wall. But you are gonna head up. Line. Hand on the wall to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so making physical contact with the rune, roll 2d20 and take the higher and compare it to your Mission save against damage. magic. Okay. Oh, no. uh, so I'm liking my odds on this first one. It's a three. Okay, cool. The second one. And that's a one. Whoa! <laughs> you come back. I'm not you getting sick today. Felt around. You touch it. You feel where the rune is. It is cold. It is bone cold. You feel around. Don't notice anything else, though. Okay, I felt the rune, right? Yeah. I pull out a dagger. Just swipe it across the rune, hoping to break. Give me another save against magic. But you won't have disadvantage. Okay, that was a nine. <laughs> All right. Roll your damage for this attack. You need to do five or more Where's damage. Dagger? I've got to find one of my caltrops. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. That was a uh, four, and I th this adds strength? Yes. Six. You rolled six damage? Yes. There is a magical explosion behind oh, this no. corner. I need you to roll a save against damage or against magic again, but it's your last one. <laughs> it will be your last it's one, one way or another. Sure do is this. there no You're more magic saved. in this area? There is no uh, more eight. magic. I like this die a lot. I swapped dies after I started after I kept rolling low, but suddenly I'm really happy I'm <laughs> I, I'm rolling low. Eric, <laughs> Eric, do you passively sense undead, or do you have to choose to sense undead? Uh, no, it's it's part of uh, the racial thing. I can sense. Oh, that's right. For a moment, you sense an undead around the corner, and then it fades away back to Ellis's character. Oh, okay. So knowing what I, I've sensed, the very little that the dog person has told me, can I roll uh, Arcana to just get an idea of what this might have been? Yeah. Yeah, you can give me an Arcana check. 
All right. Uh, I am trained in this very well. So that's, uh, I rolled a 10 plus five if I'm going by the total. Yeah, um, this may have been a rune trap that uh, would turn things into undead if they saw it and failed the save. Nice. I really, I really wish I could have gotten a closer view at it before he blew it up then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what would it have done? It Makes adds you... the zombie template to your character. Yeah, but I'm saying, uh, well, yeah, I guess he wouldn't be a zombie, but like, if you're already undead and you walk up to it, it's just I'm not like, undead. he's not very, dead. Ghouls it's, it's, are mostly dead. They are not undead. It's very Got specific. It. says, I am not alive, technically, but I am not undead. <laughs> yeah, because the big thing is like, his spell that does harm, if he were undead, he could use that to heal himself for a lot. Oh, neat. Because he can use it to heal his undead. All right. But yeah, magical energy explodes. Ellis probably has a couple purple singes on his fur and cloak. But uh, there's some ghostly howls as the spirits are There's no more glowing over there, right? No. Ellis, what is your character's name again? Uh, Rhoda. I like that we just use Rhoda to test what happens when things do stuff. (laughs) Well, everybody needs a roll. <clears throat> we call it rotoscoping. <laughs> I'm I'm the one that was both crazy and a criminal. <laughs> All right. Oh, all right. He's like, by yeah. the time this is done, you'll be crazier. So, at this point, you guys can well with all that screwing around. Ten minutes have passed. At this point, you guys can go back to room eight. You could backtrack any amount. All right, so just to get uh, our bearings a bit, where did we start bearings? I'm a bear. Um, Down in area one. In so the we very started large in area cavern. one. You went up to seven, six, and eight. Six and eight, okay. Is there perhaps some way that we could show this to the people watching? We could if I didn't have a layout set up for in case people dropped in and out. I, in theory, could have set that up, but all my time was set setting that other up. Well, we can always go back north uh, if there's nothing else this way, but I did sense more undead up there. All right. Well, so, okay, it seems like... So we we explored all the caverns here, right? Like Yes, yeah. we explored everything to the east. All right, no food here. Let's try the other way. You went down and... the side path. There was no Skyrim door. Go the other nope. way. I'm just going to uh, stealth real quick before we, before we continue. Yeah. Okay, that's... Uh, it's going to be real hard to see me at a 20. Okay. So, backtracking. This is going to take you guys another 10 minutes. Make your way all the way up. You start heading north. You're not far enough north to get to the undead you can sense. But in room two, you sense them in room three for a rough distance. In room two, off in the corner is a glowing forge with an anvil next to it. Above the anvil has something written in Dwarven. None of you took the dwarf, so I don't think any of you know Dwarven. You have magics. That may be able to help you. I don't. I think somebody ha- might have comprehend languages. I do, but eh. yeah. But do you spend uh, <laughs> a slot to know oh, what graffiti and says? And, and yeah, and it's. I think it, it says only spoken languages. So I don't think I'll be okay. able to like just read. I think I can just hear things and know yeah. what they are. I hear things and know. What's going on. But yeah, there's a forge with an anvil. Something's written in dwarven above it. Is there anything else? Not in this room. It's just the anvil and the forge. Yeah, I mean, they can. This is a pathway between two rooms, so. But there's not like a hammer or anything. Oh, it has all the stuff for crafting. There would be a hammer. Oh, and it's got the whole forge and everything. Yeah, got it. Yeah, it's a whole forge. It's not just a kiln. Well, it's a forge. Does anyone want to make armor real quick or something like that? Or cook something? And he turns and looks at Leo. Hmm? 
I'll cook something. What are we cooking? Well, I was hoping you would have an idea. I would well, go for a nice pie. Who are you um, giving the uh, hero point to, Andy? Um, I'm going to give it to Bulgo because I love the bear. I can't help it. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Petty elfie boy. I like him. It's just funny to me. I'm like, he's kind of like Winnie the Pooh. I want him there all the time. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll cook you something real nice when we find some actual ingredients. But yeah, is anyone wanting to use the forge? If not, we'll move on. I'm curious, forge. but without knowing what it says, it feels a uh, feels a, a, a little too dangerous. Yeah, like me in real life would love a, a forge right now, but no. no. Eric has taken blacksmithing classes. Fuck it. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> okay. it. I've done everything else. Stick Fuck the it. dog in there. All right. Uh, hey, Bogle, we might have something to cook soon. When you, oh, boy. When you I'm get up on now. the anvil, you actually see that there's a blade half finished on top of it. Doesn't take much to do to figure that out. So it is a DC ten craft check to finish okay. the blade. Mm. Got some bonus to that. I rolled exactly a ten, so I've got a so that's a twelve. So you pick it up, you begin working on it. As you hammer, you feel a draining in your hand as some blood is pulled from your hand into the blade. Please to finish, don't tell me it does damage. Finish its forging. Your constitution score is reduced by one. However, you also now have a blade that glows as a torch and deals magical damage. Ooh. Totally sweet. <laughs> I'm like, did it hurt? Did it do any damage? It dealt one point to your constitution score. Luckily, that means it's a 13 and it doesn't drop. Well, perhaps there's more going on with this blade. I'm going to use Arcana to check it out. Yeah. Give me an Arcana check. All right. Plus five on this roll, which is probably not going to be great. Twelve. Twelve? High enough, given the context clues you have. Looking around, this uses light magic, because there's light magic, dark magic, and stuff in the setting. Which means it's essentially a holy blade. Ooh. Uh. I, don't, I don't feel like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's just like, ooh. Yeah. I'll be honest, I was going to lie to you and say that it was dangerous and take it, but you can have that. <laughs> <laughs> You, you, oh, I was hoping it was dangerous. I would take it. Now, here's the thing, though. It glows. My character may or may not have a death wish, by the way. It, it glows <laughs> as if the same light as a torch. I did not say that you can turn that light off. I have to get a sheath. Yeah. Oh, we can it's going to make, make a... my sneaking a lot harder. <laughs> yeah, it'll make sneaking a lot harder for now. But. It is a magic weapon, so I mean... Totally cool. Yeah. Who needs to sneak when you have a magic weapon? Well, is this the same damage as a rapier? Uh, yeah, we can have it be the same okay. damage as a rapier. No, I'm asking because I want to I get the best damage I can It's a get. D8 damage. <laughs> oh, then I'll take that. That's better than the rapier. Nice. Yeah, it doesn't have a plus to hit or anything, but it counts as magical damage, which, depending on what's in the lower levels, that might be how you live. Yeah. It's a light source. Right. Well, that worked out pretty well for us. Let's move on. Definitely right. better than the buttons. So, I still wanted... I thought those buttons were very entertaining, so... I mean, they were a little entertaining. I'm sad that we left so soon. I don't so, know. It didn't seem all that entertaining to me. It was just dark. 
on this. That is true. Room three has an alcove up to the north, as you can see on the map. In that alcove, there is a ring of standing stones. Each of them has kind of a hole in them. One of the stones in that hole is glowing. More importantly, and what our necromancer would know immediately, is there are 11 giant rats here. You can notice them because they're the animated zombified corpses of 11 giant rats. This ruins a good rat. Uh, well, if you put enough salt on it, I mean, it kind of covers up the spoiled meat taste. They're kind of all around this room, not just over in the alcove. There's 11 of them, so they're all spread out, kind of wandering around. But up in the alcove, you can see 12 standing stones, each with a hole in it. One of the holes is currently glowing. It's currently white? Glowing. Maybe you should stick your glowing sword in the glowing hole. I've heard that before. Wait, no. Oh, no, perhaps. that's not what that... Hang on. This is probably referencing the other thing. Right. Probably. So we knew three of what them buttons did, and we know that one of them is glowing. And button number five, well, that made, that made the doggy man all glowy for a while. Now, there is a wrinkle in this with realizing that. The one that is glowing is in the three o'clock position. When you push the buttons before everything dispelled off of him, the three o'clock position one was the one that electrocuted him. Really? Okay. Well, what, what, um, what, what do the... Do the ones that are in the five and nine o'clock position look different in any All way? of the others are simply no light on. Hmm. Can we tell from the from where we are if we're actually getting the right point of reference? Uh, you can give me a survival uh, roll. Uh, survival wilderness for due north and everything. It's pretty basic. Uh, I'm going to say that, uh, that I rolled an 18, so I'm probably succeeding with my uh, modifiers. Yeah, point of reference, yeah that's a shirts. 23. Your shirt's in the three o'clock position. Okay, damn. And again, I must reiterate, there are 11 undead giant rats in this room. Yes. No, at this point, is... I'm assuming you guys are at like the far end of the room. You haven't waded in. Cause... Right. Yeah. I mean, can you can you talk to them like you did with the skeletons? Make some, make okay. nice with them? I have, uh, I have an idea. If you, uh, if, um, if you can do that, by all means, but uh, I assume that these are just gonna try and you know come for us as soon as they notice us. I can make traps. Ooh, I don't know what that entails personally, but I can make traps. Driving rats. I mean, is there a way to get past the rats? Like something to creep around or stand on? <clears throat> Yeah, there's 11 of them in this massive room. They're kind of all over, but there are large gaps, and they're undead rats. A zombie's not that bright. A rat's not that bright. A zombified rat is pretty fucking stupid. <laughs> we could always uh, choose one of us. Uh, the dog seems very, Naughty. very... Naughty. Uh, Okay, well, somebody <laughs> go make a lot of noise and the rest of us sneak past. I'm like, I'll do it. Why not? Don't die, Mr. Nice Petty Elf. Uh, I won't. I will I, be back for more. That would make me very upset. Don't worry, we will find you food. And... Especially because the rats will eat all the good parts before we can get to it. I know. You with your pep talks. <laughs> so we are... <laughs> Doing this. I was going to say, I think you can just communicate with animals, right? Like as a class ability. Um, Does a zombie rat count? Yeah. I mean. I'll allow it at disadvantage. Okay. <clears throat> well, then I'm going to do that. I'm going to be like, hey, zombie rats. I've heard that there are some zombie brain cheese fondue next door. 
Mm, mm, so yummy. All right, there's some head cheese over there. There's some head cheese over there. Oh, <laughs> damn it, Ellis. <laughs> yeah. That's All right, empathy perfect. with animals. There you go. Uh, <clears throat> exactly what we were looking for. No, I definitely have it. It's a dice check 12 plus, plus the, their HD. Their yeah. hit dice. It is a 14. How do I... And disadvantage means you got to roll twice and take the lower of the two. Well, seven. So yeah, that went uh, well. I am going to roll to see how many go over to you. <clears throat> cool. Three rats head over towards Andy's character. For a second, you think they're coming to listen to you. Mm -hmm. Until they, like, predator face open. Ah. And just... <laughs> <laughs> yep, nope, not the rats. Roll a d6 <laughs> plus your initiative, Andy. Uh, okay. You might get to react before that. Eight. Whoa, that's right. You actually have really good stats. You can react before they can do anything. What do you want to do? Um, I'm going to be like, oh, yep, no, not the not good rats, bad rats. Um, I am going to throw my torch on the ground in between me and them. Yeah, they mm -hmm. would not like that. They won't get near that torch. You're good. Take a step back. I'm like, no. Nope. They're not buying it. They just want to eat us. So. Well, the feeling is mutual, rats. All right, eat them. You can eat them. No, as, I wouldn't. I wouldn't advise it. As their <laughs> long rat heads kind of predator open in a three split, you see human skulls inside. Oh God, no! Okay, yes, those are terrifying rats. If it's time to start shooting with them, yeah. Can we, yeah, we're, we should kill them because we need to access these pillars, right? Or yeah. leave them out. They, I mean, we could Fair. still leave them out of the room. Now, there are 11 of them. God. At this I point, they far. won't, they'll probably eventually get around that torch, and that's only three of them. Mm -hmm. You start shooting, I'm going to start rolling initiative. I am fully prepared for this, and I fully accept these consequences because they don't affect me. A second. Uh, well, if I don't like the fire, stuff. I'm going to use my ability that lets me intensify fires and just make that fire on the torch bigger and bigger. Yeah, uh, you get to do that a number of times equal to your int modifier. What's your int modifier? Uh, two. So you can uh, upgrade that two times. I yeah. will definitely say that's big enough to, if you want to burn all of those for your day, that'll be big enough to make like a wall that they won't pass. But that's oh, also that was... something I can do per day? It's a number of times equal to your intelligence modifier per day. I read that right. I might also I just not know what I'm talking about. It doesn't say that. It's, oh, it says um, if I have a fire, I can increase its intensity up to one time per, per level. Oh, one time per level. I think a lot of so stuff. I can so make you can it only like do it one once. time more intense. Yes. It doesn't uh, say per day, per, though. No, it's per fire. You're right. I was yeah, thinking of a different thought, class's yeah. ability. Okay. So yeah, so I can just make it like doubly big, basically. Yeah. So it's now like a bonfire size fire. Yeah. Dropped a D4. I'm scared. I can't see it. <laughs> um, do the rats like recoil from it more? Like, do they seem like yes. freaked out by the fire? Oh, yeah. Okay. Because I can make a lot more fire. Or I can make a lot more fires bigger. Yeah, they will not get near that fire. That'll help keep them at bay. Now, obviously, again, you start picking them off with arrows or something, they might get more desperate and act differently. But... All right, so what's the plan? Are we just going to stand behind this fire and hope that they go in and become deliciously roasted? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd recommend more of a braise for these undead rats. You know, the meat gets real gristly and tough. You need to... Slow cook, break it down a little more. Oh, but yes. 
I can totally have time. I've got an idea. Hmm. If they're afraid of the fire, say we start uh, taking an arrow, lighting it on fire, and shooting it, shooting it, and he does the same thing he did. Make us a path with the flames. Make like little, like little flame barriers. Yeah. 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 You can burn up some arrows and do that. No one is barrier than me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I got to go find $5. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, Nobody's barrier than me. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, got the All right, points. so <laughs> that's going to take some time, though. So that's going to eat up another 10 minutes. At this point, I've also been ticking down the time as you guys bicker and decide and deal with stuff. It's been... Classic RPG stuff. <laughs> it's been about an hour since Ellis got electrocuted. Oh, yeah. The light in the Standing Stone goes out. The light Maybe standing that's... stone at four o'clock ignites. Huh. Wait a minute. Maybe that stone wasn't the right one when we pressed it, but it was by the time we got back or something. It might be worth going back and trying out that four o'clock stone. Who can run the fastest? Me. Of course it's you. I can run it three times my move. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You can when you run, you actually go crazy fast. And you're I really good at pushing those fours. buttons. So you very so, much can run the fastest. Okay. Yeah. How about you run back there, press button number four and see what happens? We'll stay here and watch the pillars and see if anything happens. Who can heal? I'm sure one of us can. Just go do it. Go, go, go. Okay. If if I don't come back real quick, come on over there, please. I will <laughs> come back. In you. this system, there is also mundane healing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. I think after each encounter, we can each like try and heal someone else. Mm -hmm. There's like also if you die, I can bring you back as a zombie, and then I can use harm to heal you. But you're dead, so I don't want to be dead. But I you're not be dead. hurt. You're just dead. Anyway, right. I'm running. I'm off. All right. Yeah, I don't need doggy. a torch because I've got a sword. Yes. The Just sword can hang mouth. at your side. You're lit. You run by. You go into the room with the pillar. Do you hit Bam. the one at four o'clock? Yes. You slam it. Yes. Right. You push the one at four o'clock. Please don't, There is please don't say a rumbling pieces. sound. The DS begins to lower at a speed of 10 feet per turn, which is 10 minutes. Now, with you being able to run, you could get there, get back in one turn. It takes three turns for people moving at normal speed. I've got to run back. All right. Whew. All right. It is down 10 feet. I get back. I'm just like, hey, guys, it's going down. Come on, let's go back. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> right, yeah. All right, it is down. Can I just bolts right on back. 40 feet by the time they get back. There is now a hole where that DS was. You still hear grinding as something is lowering. Should, how, how big is the hole? Is this like something we could go down? Yeah, it's about 10 feet wide now. Because as okay. it dropped, sand started falling and widened. Should okay, it's any, 10 like, feet magic wide. To, like, let us drop down there. Was... I'd like to just do the thing where I, the thing where you like put your back against the wall and your, or your feet, except it's not my back, it's my hands because I'm eight feet tall. Just <laughs> slide down. <laughs> All right, yeah. Give me an acrobatics check to cut. Uh, I will actually say, with that, given your height, a failure, as long as you don't critically fail, you'll get half damage. A success, you take no damage. So give uh, me a DC 15 acrobatics check. Uh, I was hoping athletics. No, there's two types of athletics. Athletics basic and athletics acrobatics. Damn it. I've got a basic. All You're right. doing something pretty so, fancy. This is acrobatics. You can still try it, though. It's a dexterity bonus. All right. 
Uh, that would be a 15. You fumble, you slide, but you make your way down and you land on the pillar as it's still lowering. Ooh. He, is, he has a lit up sword though, so you guys can see it's now about 42, 43 feet down as he's still slowly. Hey, you think you can catch me? <laughs> it's a smaller drop, come on. Um, He's got a death wish. You're no. not going to catch me though. And, um, no, no, I'm not. Geronimo. You know, I probably had rope. <laughs> probably. Yeah. Let's see. I don't. I have an iron skillet. He continues uh, lowering it deeper. Doesn't say in my gear that I have I, rope. I'm gonna try and climb down the walls. I do have claws. Oh, got claws have too. Claws. All could right. I, could I? Worst case scenario, I'm there to catch somebody. Yeah, that's that's my. I have retractable claws, so I'm gonna try. The, you said it's like just ground, right? It's not. It's like, stone. like falling sand on the edges. Okay. So you'll I have know. disadvantage, but you can make an athletics check. Okay. And hopefully, my buddy can catch me. DC. 15. I really hope that it's sleight of hand. I really hope that it's basic athletics. Basic. To I mean, catch. It is athletics basic. I am trained in subterfuge. Okay. That's that's a climbing, right? No. <laughs> no, no. I rolled a 14. I'm going to try to call to any giant bats that might be around or flying cave creature. So you failed by one. You're going to slip halfway, roll 3d6. Oh, he's not catching me? Uh, I'm catching. You still, we still oh. know how hard he's hitting. Um... <laughs> All right, so that that could have been a lot worse. That was an eight. A total of eight. Well, yeah, because you climbed and fell as part of the climb. That's only a four, and we're gonna split that damage. So both of you take two damage. Oh, can I not try to like reduce it with my catch? You ever have a person fall on you from three stories mm -hmm. up? Hey, it was only like two stories. That's not. That's not I like mean, that. I am eight feet tall, so it's about three story. It, okay. It's like it is about. It, it was like forty story, forty feet. So like that is three but, stories because it's. But I got, I got halfway, he got down, halfway before he fell. Anyways, uh, okay. I'm okay. gonna it try and do like something story? similar. <laughs> nice. I'm gonna Give try me. and do something similar and like take my claws. Oh, by the way, of... uh, if I take two damage, I go unconscious. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't so try and I, catch me then. <laughs> I'm already unconscious because I yeah, just he's took two damage. Done. Yeah, he's just unconscious. Excuse me. Here's my good, great go. catch. Thanks, buddy. And I like pat him like, oh. All right. So Bogo's <laughs> going down. It sounds like uh, well, Yanto. Bo Bogo, uh, you mind if I catch a ride? Hop on. Hop right. on, smelly man. <laughs> All right. Bogo, give me a basic athletics with disadvantage. I don't even think I have athletic. Oh, I do. I have basic athletics. Okay. That's not, I mean, I, I get up. You need four, a 15, but it's at disadvantage. Oh boy. Um, well, I got a 10. All right. Roll 3d6. Whoa. <laughs> uh, all right. So that is nine. All right. So I got split in half, rounded up to five. Those on the ground, including Unconscious Boy, will each take three. Oh, Bogo no! and Yanto will each take two. You have dropped so, below zero health. I need you to roll a save versus death. I have a I'll toughness actually, of two, so I actually don't take any damage. <laughs> nice. Yeah, do you I'll remember you have toughness and damage reduction? What? And yeah. is this shadow damage? Do you have toughness? I, yes, I didn't okay. know this. So you probably have, I would like have some four health, health more than I do. Yeah, so you have four health okay, more, so, so you're I would, conscious. I've I, taken damage. So now you have one health. <laughs> okay, I didn't take damage when you when you landed on me. I took six damage before, which would have been four, which means that I would have been at, at four. I, so I would, now I take three, which means I'm taking one damage, so I'm at two. Hey, hey. <laughs> back where I was. I'm better hey. off than I thought. I have toughness, but only for shadow damage. But we are in pitch blackness, so can I argue that this is... <laughs> no. <laughs> I didn't see this coming, so... Um, hold on. There is a darkness within Bulgo's fur. Reduce your damage by one. We're towards the end of the night. 
It's fine. I was only taking two damage. I don't yeah, care. I know. <laughs> All right. So, Andy and Ellen, you're still up towards the top. You said you were going to try and conjure, a, like, summon a giant bat? Yeah, or a couple of them to Okay. Get... Are you using a spell to do this? What are you using? I am using my communicate with animals. I can make an animal my companion three times per day. Okay, I'm going to quickly look up the hit dice of a giant bat because you are limited on your companion being equal to your hit dice, I believe. I just hit my thing. And you have a hit dice worth of animals under your control. Oh no, that doesn't count as your companion. Mm. Bolgo like landed on everybody and everybody took damage and Bolgo's like that wasn't too bad after all. No. Just <laughs> jump, it's not that far. <laughs> Just jump, you'll be fine. You know what? Since it's a temporary one, it's towards the end of the night, give me a wilderness survival roll of 15. If you succeed, you can get a giant bat or if you like a fail, swarm of bats. All the rats show up. Um, can I use a hero point? You can to re-roll. Yes, you can. You also have survival, which you can yeah, re-roll. Yeah, you can also burn your survival to re-roll. We've got uh, 10, or I think. Yeah, yeah, you guys have 10. I gave you a lot of survival. Okay, I'm going to burn that. Is that the number under your charisma? Oh, yeah, uh-huh. as you are. Sure. Happening. There. I have 11. Hello, hello. You're hello. just... Bat-free caves. <laughs> These are bat-free caves. Well, maybe you can do what I was going to try. Oh, yeah? Well, yes. Have in mind. I'm going to summon a tentacle 20 feet down. Oh, my God. This is a brilliant use of this. Um, to catch me. And lower you. Yes. <laughs> I like that a lot. That is oh, a my point. God. If yes. only she had done that for all of us. <laughs> you guys jumped in. <laughs> yeah, the tentacle is proficient enough. Um, because it just opens like this wish for purple Corey. portal, twenty feet down. Several tentacles come out. You can drop the tentacle, will catch you, kind of cradle you, it's lower like, you, uh, and like hands. unspin you almost like a bungee cord, and then set you down towards the bottom. Uh, hey, you'll probably on. still you drop like that? ten <laughs> feet, but that's not enough for damage. At that point, he's, she's dropping two feet as I go to catch her. Yeah, like yeah. Yeah. just like gently just, lowering her. And that tentacle uh, hangs around for like a few five minutes. minutes. Yeah. Yep. Can we like cut a piece off of that? Get Bulgo some food. Um, I don't know the. I've never tried it, but you could. You could always. I won't try it, but you can. I, I mean, it's your tentacle. It'll be rude if I did it. Here's here's no, Lulu I mean, calamari. The, the tentacle will grow back. It comes from the void. It's fine. It starts weeping Bulgo? something green out of its suction cups. I feel you, like I'm the only one that can reach up up? to get this thing with it, uh, to be honest. So. Ah, here's your knife, yeah. Yeah, Ooh. I just... Uh, screw yeah. the knife. I've got a magic I've got a magic uh, glowing true. sword. Yeah. <laughs> Give me an attack. It's AC, I believe, is 15. Uh, no. Google has to eat something before the end of the session. This is a little bit too I know, late. right? What'd you get? I uh, No. Okay. You said it was AC was 15. It's not good enough. You go to swing, it's still lowering. It's out of your reach. You guys, the pillar finally finishes lowering at 50 feet. It sinks into the ground. And the hole above you begins to close. As you're now... It's pitch black, but you have a sword that's a torch. You have a hat on fire. You're in a large room made of marble. With statues all around you and this is where we're gonna pick up next week yeah i think we did it guys so it would be so funny if we all like made this big effort we're like oh we gotta get into this lowering dais thing and then you were like and lava pours in it's a trap <laughs> you i thought die. you were gonna say the, the roof closes and it's just a 10 foot pit <laughs> a 10 foot wide pit you're just there at the bottom it's just it's like guess then, what don't jump you, in this is osr the yeah. Right. The top but, is closed, and now that you're at the bottom, it starts to move back up. 
Oh no. <laughs> the hole is big enough to crawl through and you have to tell your players that they can crawl through it. And if they do, they die. <laughs> no oh, save. Fun. They just die. They just die. I All love right. old classic. Oh, Thank yeah. you everybody for joining us. I hope you guys are all able to make it back next week and no one mysteriously has excuses they have to make because this was a horrible experience. But <laughs> actually, everybody shut up, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody so were trying to cook me. <laughs> I love this game. This has actually been a lot of fun. Uh, those somehow, if you're here watching and you don't already know about saving throw, watch these guys over on saving throw. They do great stuff. I tend to actually bomb your streams, Eric, when you do, uh, God, why am I blanking on the pirate video game? And I'm blanking on it now. Oh, see if thieves. See if thieves. thieves. Because your salt bay goes when we run a show, so I don't get to watch that. Uh, and then, Ellen, what is your podcast again? The Birdhouse Mysteries. Okay. And I'm sorry, it's not that I don't care. I'm just actually friends with Dom, who runs Saving Throw, so I remember <laughs> that shit. Anyways, we will catch everybody next week. Bye. All right. <laughs>